brothers and sisters, we are present in this Eucharistic gathering, in this assembly of thanksgiving, <clears throat> to give praise and thanks to God for the grace of the eighth centenary of the Dominican presence and preaching here in the United Kingdom. In his allocution on August 15, 1921, the seventh centenary of the arrival of the Dominicans here in Oxford, Cardinal Aidan Gaske recalled how the sons of Dominic were welcomed as teachers by many bishops in Europe, inspired by the example of the Pope who appointed a Dominican as teacher or master in his pontifical household. Many years ago, when I was a student brother, I attended a gathering of brothers and sisters in initial formation from different religious congregations. I proudly introduced myself as a Dominican. In jest, one participant replied, Dominican? You are medieval. I reposted with a smile, we are not medieval. We are classical. <laughs> a classic is at once timeless and timely. It is timeless, not because it lies beyond the vicissitudes of history, but because it becomes an event of meaning in every moment of history. Saint Dominic embraced a mission that is timely because he saw a world in dire need of a new evangelization. Yet the same mission is truly timeless because every generation is in want of a new evangelization. That is, the preaching of the God who is ever ancient, yet ever new. Indeed, St. Dominic has something to say to all times and places because the gospel that formed and transformed his life is classical, medieval, yet contemporary. That is Dominic truly classical. A Jesuit friend who works <clears throat> at their general curia in Rome asked me last year, what is your hope for the Dominicans today? I said, I hope we Dominicans would do what Ignatius of Loyola did. He thought I was joking. <laughs> but I pointed out to him that exactly 300 years after Dominic died, Ignatius of Loyola read the lives of St. Francis and St. Dominic and experienced the grace of conversion. That is my hope for all of us Dominicans to reread the life of St. Dominic and be renewed in our vocation as preachers of grace. In today's gospel, we hear Jesus preparing the disciples for his forthcoming ascension. Now I am going to the one who sent me. The mystery of the ascension means that Jesus took on a new type of presence, thereby transcending the spatial and temporal limits imposed by bodily existence. At his ascension, Jesus' presence is no longer fettered to his visibility. You know, there is a big difference between visibility and presence. I heard one prior complain, you know, we have a friar who is visible, but not present. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
The apostles know that even if Jesus is no longer visible, they know by faith that he will always be present among them. They are assured by the comforting promise of the Lord, know that I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. And the world recognizes the perennial presence of Jesus in the world when we obey his command. Go therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teach them. Preaching and teaching people so that they become a community of disciples are the very same mission Saint Dominic entrusted to us. I learned of the celebration of the translation of Saint Dominic when I was a novice. I knew the Spanish word traslacion, which means to transfer something from one another, usually a religious procession. But the English word translation meant for me at that time simply the interpretation or rendition from one language to another. So I was wondering then, why do we need to translate St. Dominic? Is a May 24 event in the Dominican calendar a celebration of Dominic's translation into other languages? Human life is like the inverse <clears throat> of the mystery of the incarnation. That is, the word becoming flesh. It is some sort of a reversal because we are first flesh, then when we die in this world, we become a memory. In a certain sense, our flesh becomes a word. Literally, our life as friars is summed up in an obituary that is published in the Analecta of the Order, the flesh becoming word. Our life, but our life as Dominicans is not reduced to ashes and bones in cemeteries. We become part of the memory of the order that is kept in the archives of the order. But Dominic's life and charism are dynamic words that become flesh and real in the lives of Dominicans all over the world, that is, synchronically, and in history, that is, diachronically. In a broad sense, the words that describe Dominic's life and charism are translated into the different languages and cultures. Today's feast, the translation of the relics of St. Dominic is significant and meaningful only because his charism and living memory are in a certain sense being translated in the different cultures and languages of the world even today. But just as there are good and bad translations, we pray that the way we live our Dominican life today is faithful to the original text, that is, the original inspiration Dominic received from our God. Today, here in Oxford, we give thanks to God as we celebrate 801 years of the ongoing, dynamic, living, and effective English, Scottish, and Welsh translation of St. Dominic's life and charism. If we are to be preachers and teachers of God's word, we first need to realize that we cannot speak unless we have heard. In fact, most mute people cannot speak, not because something is wrong with their tongues, but because they are deaf. One cannot produce a meaningful sound without hearing any. 
I have witnessed some years ago in the University of Santo Tomas in Manila, hundreds of hearing impaired patients who were given free hearing aids. I personally witnessed how the innocent faces of deaf children lighted up in amazement as they entered, as they entered the world of sound. Then they are taught to produce their first syllables, mama, papa. Their capacity to speak words depends largely on their capacity to listen to words. As preachers of God's word, we ought to, to speak in God's name. But we can only speak in his name if we first listen in attentive obedience to his word. For how could we speak rightly if we have not heard correctly? Sadly, there are some who claim they speak on behalf of the church when they do not even listen to what the church teaches. Some claim to speak about God or in the name of God when they do not even listen to God in prayer or in the contemplation of scriptures. Ben, Ben Earl, <laughs> pointed out yesterday that on the site where the first Black Friars was built 800 years ago now stands the Oxford Deaf and Hard of Hearing Center. In a sense, that place has helped countless people to hear and listen so that they may speak. But Black Friars, no matter where it is located, is a place of learning and listening, a place of prayer and contemplation, so that its professors, students, and graduates may faithfully teach the truth and preach God's holy word. And today, after 800 years, Black Friars has expanded its mission with the addition of the Las Casas Institute and the Aquinas Institute. Last year, we celebrated the eighth centenary of St. Dominic's Dies Natalis, or Birth into Eternal Life, with a theme to be at table with St. Dominic. Yet, to be at table with St. Dominic is first of all to learn how to be at table with Jesus. In the Gospel of John, we read, one of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining on the chest of Jesus. In Sinu Yesu. At the table of the Last Supper, John reclined on the chest of Jesus at the prodding of Peter to know the name of the betrayer. Yet it seems John seeks to know more than a name, for at the beginning of the same gospel we read, no one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is in the breast of the Father, in sinu patris who has made him known. This striking parallel at the chest of Jesus and at the chest of the Father conveys clearly the message. The one who leans on the chest of God can make him known, can bear witness to him. To lean on the chest of Jesus is to listen to the rhythm of his heartbeat and the vibration of his voice, to know him closely and personally. As the beloved disciple leaned close to the Lord, his ear was close to the heart of Jesus, while his eyes were gazing outward to the world. Listening to the heartbeat of Jesus and looking towards the world. This is Saint Dominic, 
speaking with God and speaking about God. This, for me, is the most profound sense of what it means to be a table with Dominic.